Hello, internet people. Ever since Garrett decided to be a selfish punk and go all the way over there to South Korea, I've been stuck here in Buffalo doing nothing, and I've been desperate to plaster my face onto your computer screen. No, no, don't listen to that son of a bitch. Choke your life. You can still follow me at youtube.com slash Garrett Fallon. Please, help me. What was that? Someone's coming. So here I am on your computer screen. Whenever you see me, I'll be talking about science and technology. The first thing that I'm gonna talk about is artificial intelligence. I'm sure you guys remember that earlier this year, IBM made a supercomputer that they called Watson. In order to show off how awesome Watson is, they put him up against Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter in a game of Jeopardy. Rutter got somewhere around 21,000 and Jennings got about 24,000. But at the same time, Watson racked up $77,147. Take that, humanity. I don't know about you, but my first reaction was <laughs> Terminator 1, 2, 3, 4. That little floaty thingy from Flubber. Actually, Having a Weibo would be pretty cool. Terminator 5! But, luckily for us, none of those are possible yet. On the one hand, you have weak artificial intelligence. This kind of AI simply mimics human intelligence. On the other hand, you have strong artificial intelligence. This comes with intelligence, a will, intentions, and motives. Strong artificial intelligence is the kind that's portrayed in most science fiction. Watson is a perfect example of weak artificial intelligence. It may be really impressive artificial intelligence, but it's still weak artificial intelligence. Watson does not have the ability to make decisions. So, as of right now, we can sit back and recognize that there's no need to worry about the impending robot-induced apocalypse that ushers in the slavery of the entire human race. That's good news, right? Also, I'm sure the guys at IBM want me to let you know that they didn't just create Watson to be a Jeopardy gimmick. They're using it right now in medical technology and other research programs. Somewhat along the same vein is a concept known as the technological singularity. Technological singularity is a hypothetical time in the foreseeable future in which the level of competence of computers is going to rise significantly above the competence level of humans. I mean, let's face it. Some things we as humans are really good at, and other things we're just not good at. We are really good at social interactions, but we're really not so good at complex things like arithmetic. But the computers that we're creating right now had the capability of being equally good at everything that they are programmed to do. Some say that right now the intelligence level of computers is rising exponentially, while the intelligence level of humans is sort of not an exponential rise, if you know what I mean. Just think about it for a second. The computer that is in my cell phone is better than most computers that were invented in the late 1990s. When speculating about the future, some people say that the machines will grow exponentially in power to a point where they can design their own software. Some scientists and engineers are saying that strong AI will be a direct result of reverse engineering our human brain, but until that happens, I'm not convinced that computer consciousness will spontaneously arise. I guess this does bring up some interesting things to think about, huh? Do you think that technology is really going to take over like everybody says? Do you think there is going to be some kind of slippage from weak AI to strong AI? Do you think that's even possible? So let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments in the doobly-doo below or leave a video response. And while you're at it, you might as well let me know if you find any other cool, geeky, or nerdy things. That's all I got for you guys today, so I will see you next time.